absolutely delightful. One of the projects that Scott put together and actually demonstrated this project in front of the entire chapel was a hydrolytic combustion chamber where he was splitting apart water using electricity and then burning the oxygen that was uh, produced as a result of that. So uh, I, was, I was absolutely thrilled to see a student who was not only interested in pursuing those, those things, but actually sharing his knowledge with other people, not afraid to step up and show people how things work. Amen. Scott also was, uh, he was one of those guys who, um, he, he did some things that I had never seen done by a student before. Uh, in that engineering class, Scott disassembled a couple of different microwaves. And Billy, I'm sorry if one of those was actually, you know, from your kitchen. Uh, my, my apologies. But he, he, he salvaged the transformers from these microwaves uh, and used them to conduct electricity through a variety of different things. One of those things was uh, he liked to soak wood in various electrolytes and then uh, see the fractal pattern of the electricity as it went from one side of the wood to the other and gave those away as gifts. I'd never seen a student who really took science uh, in my class and actually turned it into a hobby and uh, even something he could give gifts to others. So good on you for that too, Scott. Now I told you he's quiet, um, but I would say that Scott Lohr, during his time here at Cookland Academy, has quietly earned the respect of his peers. Uh, he is... He is athletic. Uh, in fact, uh, I, I'm still grieving that I never had the opportunity to coach Scott uh, on uh, our soccer team, um, but he's athletic. And how do I know this? Because I would watch him on occasion jump out on the gym floor with a bunch of other students. I would see him at retreats, uh, engaging in things, and uh, he is lithe and athletic. He is strong and quick and has endurance, uh, and he's got that going for him. And that wins cred right here at Cook Inlet Academy for sure. In his, uh, in his junior year, Scott decided to throw his, ring in, his hat in the ring um, and apply for student council. And uh, selected by his peers, he was elected to student council to serve in a leadership position. Um, and, and, and while many of the students at Cook Inlet would tell you that, you know, that's, uh, being a part of student council isn't maybe all that it sounds like it's cracked up to be, uh, it was important that Scott was on there. And I could tell you one reason uh, a, 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 indeed. Uh, during meetings, it was Scott who was, uh, who, uh, on occasion, I would jump into those meetings and uh, I would hear Scott Lohr uh, and he would be asking questions about how are we gonna, how are we gonna do this? How are we gonna make this happen? And so quietly, even though he wasn't the president, in fact, I guess he was the vice president his junior year, congratulations, Scott, vice president, which means whenever the president wasn't there, he ran the ship. Um, and, uh, and we did a lot of great things under the tutelage and leadership uh, of the student council during his junior year and the first part of his senior year. Scott, I have to tell you that one of my favorite memories, though, was uh, this year at the, um, at the, the retreat. Uh, our retreat, our high school retreat, we started off right at the beginning of the year to build fellowship and camaraderie amongst our, generally, our high school students. This year, we actually took the junior high as well. We had close to 50 kids, junior high and high schoolers, who were at this retreat. And I can recall very clearly on one of the nights that we went outside to play a game in a field. It was a capture the flag game when kids are just, they're spread in the woods. Nobody really knows what the rules are until one person stands up from amongst the crowd and starts to scream and yell instructions and to gather people together. And who was that person? That's right. That was Scott Lohr. Uh, Scott took leadership in that. He figured out a way to herd cats. Uh, and, uh, and Scott, I know how tough that is. And I just watched from a distance. I didn't want to get involved. And I was very, very, very proud to see the, the way that you stepped up into leadership and made things happen. Um, not just participating yourself, but willing to help others have fun as well. Well done. The last thing that I would say, uh, I would say there are a number of students, uh, male students, young male students at Cook Inlet Academy in attendance here today. If you're, a, if you're a, a male student, current or past here at Cook Inlet Academy, just give a honk. Yeah. So the reason I bring this up is, um, is because uh, in general, Mr. German and I could tell you that when we see a group of boys all, all around, huddled together around each other, it's generally not a good thing. Um, but I took some consolation when amongst that group, Scott Lohr was standing there because I knew that we had a voice of reason amongst the knuckleheads and that there was not going to be complete chaos, but instead that Scott was going to moderate uh, their desire to do whatever it was that they were talking about doing uh, and help them to think through because he is that logical, analytical leader. So Scott, um, on my behalf, uh, I simply say thank you for your leadership of the young men 
uh, uh, in the school. I'm not sure uh, what we're going to do without you in terms of uh, herding those knuckleheads. The last thing I'd like to say about Scott Lore, uh, and Billy, I got to tell you this, I'm probably going to ball. I've never actually cried on the radio, uh, but uh, we'll see how that sounds. So Weston, you can you know, cut that out or whatever you can do. Um, but um, uh, I have an impression of Scott uh, as a family man, and he always spoke very highly of his family, whether it was his sisters um, uh, uh, or, um, or especially, this was it, Billy, um, because Scott, many of you may not be aware, Scott went on a mission trip this, during his senior year with a the group. They, they went down to Peru to build churches in small villages. And I saw a, great, a bunch of great pictures. And, and Billy, uh, his mom, got to go along on that trip with him. And, um, and so when, when he got back and things settled down a little bit, I remember asking Scott, cause, and I was sort of expecting a different response. But I asked Scott, so Scott, what's it like to go on a mission trip with your mom? And he just looked me straight in the eye, and he said, my mom rocks. She is the best. So congratulations to you, Billy. You've raised a young man who respects you uh, and gives honor to you publicly, uh, and you should be proud of that. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to know and introduce to you Scott Lohr. And uh, next, um, if you don't mind, I'd like to talk about Robert Walsh. Now, really, um, there should be a special thing going on here today because I don't know if there has ever been a student who has attended Cook Inlet Academy for as many years as Robert Walsh has attended Cook Inlet Academy. If I'm not mistaken, Robert, 13 years? 14 years at Cook Inlet Academy. And only two of those were... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. Robert has been here. He's been here forever, and we are so grateful. Robert, I have to tell you, honestly, as I was thinking about this, I got to thinking about the last 13 or 14 years that I've been here at this school and how much things have changed, and I thought about names and people and events. Uh, you remember Miss Becky? Obviously. Yeah. Do you remember playing for Coach Justin? Yeah, and the loons, yes, uh, and where Robert earned the uh, nickname Big Bob Walsh uh, and it, for his uh, efforts on the basketball court. And Robert, I don't know if it, it occurred to me that uh, you've attended Cook Inlet Academy when all my kids went to school here, and, uh, and nobody else can say that. Well done. Um, so um, if, if I was to give Robert a nickname, if that is, if he was a player for me, which I don't hold it against you, but he never was a player for me on the soccer team. I'm still, he, he promised, but it didn't materialize. Nonetheless, if I was to give him, uh, give him a nickname, from watching him in the classroom, watching him as an athlete on the basketball court, uh, Robert, I, I would have given you the nickname Mr. Discipline. And that's not because you had to go to the principal's office a lot and uh, you know, meet with Mr. German in regards to discipline. Um, but rather, when I call you Mr. Discipline, um, I think of a phrase that, um, that, that I have heard used in various athletic contests. And uh, tell me if you've ever heard this phrase that goes, do work, son. Yeah, do work, son. And I, I can tell that he's heard that because he does it. The kid just works, flat out works. Um, uh, he is rarely late to class. He communicates very well with his teachers. His work is on time. And you can tell that he has worked hard at it. Um, he's prepared for whatever's going to happen, whether it's, a, whether it's a, a, a classroom event or whether it's an athletic contest. Robert prepares himself. In fact, Sharon, I never made it to your house. Um, I wanted to come down there because rumors had, had it. Robert, would, he would never not have his work done. And so there were rumors about the torture chamber that you must have had set up to get this kid uh, to finish everything. Um, I wish that I could have been a fly on the wall a couple times to see how you accomplished that. But he was never late. Um, and so you guys have done very well in that respect. And he's taken well to the training that you've given to him. I got it. <laughs> Amen. I got to tell you about um, uh, Robert's, uh, Robert's willingness to serve around the school. I can't tell you the number of times, and Mr. German could probably count them, but uh, Robert would jump in Mr. German's truck or, or jump someplace to, to make a run to the dump uh, to carry stuff or just to pick up and move stuff around. We're always moving, uh, moving equipment and, and furniture, and Robert was the first to lend a hand in those situations. I can remember giving him my gloves so he could go out in the, in the dead of winter and operate the snowblower because he was done with all his work. Uh, so, Robert, we appreciate your service to Cook Inlet Academy making things happen. Yeah. 
there's some people present here who will remember uh, a mission trip that Robert went on to Costa Rica. And uh, we were in Costa Rica, and I had the good fortune of being with a group, um, including Robert, a group of young men who went to the house of a disabled man uh, by the name of Chico. And Chico was absolutely incapable of, um, uh, of doing things for himself. He had a very, very bright mind, but physically he had a lot of problems. And his property was, um, I don't know how best to describe it, it was a mess. Um, it was a mess of things that, that people would drop off because Chico's, uh, his, his ability was to tinker with things uh, and then to sell them to other people. So he would tinker with trash and turn it into usable product for, sell, for sale to other people. Um, but there was a lot of stuff waiting to be tinkered with, and it was just junk in his yard. And I don't know, you, you can imagine Costa Rica. Chico's house was right in the jungle, right next to a river. And all this junk was, was just space for all sorts of creepy critters uh, to hide underneath. And Robert rolled up his sleeves, um, and uh, he went to work moving stuff around. Uh, on occasion, uh, I'd hear a yell uh, from one of the boys about some big, hairy, eight-legged critter that was, uh, that was coming at him. Um, but, uh, but, Robert, I just watched the way that you interacted, and it was always very respectful with Chico and his wife. Um, and I was proud to be working side-by-side -side ministering uh, with this young man. So, thanks, Robert. So I have to tell you, you have an athlete standing in front of you. Um, and I can't even tell you all of it. Uh, Robert, uh, one of my greatest disappointments will be that I never made it to watch you play baseball. Um, uh, uh, the, kid, the kid is apparently a ball player of that sort and knows all sorts of baseball uh, facts and trivia. Um, what I did get to watch, though, was Robert Walsh on the basketball court. And his basketball career goes all the way back to junior high school. Um, when, oh well, my goodness, a stiff breeze that, that we're having right now would have blown Robert clear off of the stage. He was just a little fella, but uh, you've heard the expression, uh, it ain't the size of the dog in the fight, it's the size of the fight in the dog. And there's fight in this dog right here. Um, he, has, he has a blend of Irish tenacity and ferocity that uh, makes him a delight to watch on the floor. And i got to tell you about Robert Walsh. I, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I saw the best game of his life right here inside this gymnasium uh, at the Cookie and the Classic. Robert was raining threes uh, and playing defense uh, uh, like the Tasmanian devil. Uh, and when the game was over, I don't even remember the results of the game, but what I do remember was that guy is on fire. And I'm, I'm proud to have him as a member of Cook Inlet Academy. So, uh, Robert, um, well done in your basketball career. Uh, you've left a legacy for others to work, work towards. Uh, it's a little-known fact that Robert was actually uh, the unofficial captain of the 2019 Costa Rica Cook Inlet Academy boogie board team. Uh, you can ask him more stories about that later. And then finally, perhaps one of Robert's proudest athletic accomplishments is that he is, and there's make no mistake here, others may make claim to this title, but Robert is definitely the 12th man of the Green Bay Packers. And... Um, And uh, if you want to pick a fight, you just uh, talk smack to Robert on a Monday morning after the Packers have had a tough day on Sunday, and, uh, and, and he'll give you an earful. Uh, he's, got, he's got the stats to back it up as well. So um, that takes me to the last thing I'd like to just mention about Robert, because I think, Robert, you have done a tremendous job, I think, of recognizing what God has, has given you um, as a desire in your heart and marrying it towards, uh, towards what you want to do in the future. And I really think that God is going to bless that, Robert. Um, he, he's interested in sports casting and journalism, and he's got the skills to pay the bills. I mean, I, I don't even try to talk trivia with him. It's, it's not even worth it. Um, he knows it all. Uh, and he is, um, he is in a debate, uh, Robert. He's always got something to say. Um, and so to you, Robert, um, uh, I simply say uh, best wishes in, in that endeavor. And I can't wait to tune in and listen uh, to what, um, what you have to say. Uh, he loves to talk, and it serves him well, and he backs it up with his actions. Ladies and gentlemen, Robert Walsh. Well, by my count, there's one senior remaining on the stage we haven't talked about, so give it up for Linnea Dosi. So I, I saved Dosi for last, because if I'm going to cry, it's probably going to be over this girl. Um, 
My first impressions of Linnea Nosi happened when uh, Dawn brought her in the summertime. Um, she was not a student at Cook Inlet Academy, but her mom was going to start working that next year here at the school. Uh, and um, and uh, her mom had heard about we were going to go do a camp in Seldovia, a soccer camp. And, uh, and so um, I, think, um, I think she forced Linnea to go along saying, it'll be good for you. Uh, go make friends and, and be friendly. And, um, and so, I, Don, I don't know, do you remember this? Meeting right at the back corner of this building right here, taking stuff out of the Connex and, and got to meet you and shake your hand. And, uh, and then you handed me that young lady out of the car. And, uh, and uh, cha <laughs> uh, ch <laughs> changed my life, Don. So um, my, my first impressions of Linnea Dosi on this uh, trip to Seldovia, we were working with children, uh, helping them to have fun in the context of soccer and, uh, and just uh, teaching about healthy lifestyles and having a chance to speak a little bit about the Lord. You know, the first thing I discovered, uh, Linnea, is, she's a contemporary of my own youngest daughter, Mejon, and, and they hit it off right away, and they would both want to sleep until noon, quite frankly. Um, so, uh, uh, Linnea, I'm glad to see that you're moving out of that direction. Uh, it was a tough thing for, uh, for Dosi to, to show up here and transition to a new school as a sophomore. Um, she, uh, she, she really didn't know anybody, and, uh, and, and that's, a, that's a hard place. Um, but she did it. She did it well. She jumped right into it, both athletically and academically, um, right from the start. And uh, let, me, let me talk about this young lady. I mean, she's drop-dead gorgeous, um, but it's really what's going on inside that, that uh, is, is what's special on this, uh, in this young lady. Um, she, she <laughs> there you go. Yeah, just put, that, put the applause on automatic and set off the car alarm. That's a, I'll just have it going on. Appreciate that. Um, so Linnea, is, she's bright. I mean, she gets that from both her folks, but her mom is you know, just a whiz when it comes to math and, and also has that weird combination of creativity musically, so um, so that that between those two things, she is just a resource that you that you love to have in your school and in your classroom. Um, uh, she she is she, at Cook Inlet Academy. She was very bright, but she worked very hard in between her naps in the band room, um, and uh, and I, and I'm proud of of <laughs> the way that she did that, Linnea. Um, I was also uh, very fortunate um, to worship right alongside. Um, uh, Linnea, all, uh, all throughout her career here. And again, partially I think it started off that her mom forced her to be a part of the chapel praise team. And, uh, and she was up there and didn't want to be up there. And, uh, and, and we would rehearse, and then she would have to go and stand in front of her peers and sing uh, uh, on Wednesday at chapels. And, but she, she, she just kept going and kept going. And year after year, uh, it became more and more uh, of a delight for me to look forward to going and up to the band room and, uh, and to practicing and sitting and worshiping right alongside these young high school students who are leading our chapel. Um, and uh, her sister Cheyenne is here. Uh, Shay, you, uh, I, uh, some of my favorite memories are practicing uh, for, uh, for, for chapel up in the band room with you guys. So um, I, I think it was good rehearsal for heaven. And um, we, yeah, we'll, we'll see you there. Uh, Dosi was... Um, she was also a member of that Costa Rica mission team, uh, and it was nice to have a couple token females along. Um, just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, she actually was so committed to the worship team that she had to figure out what to do because their basketball team had qualified for the state tournament at the same time that we were supposed to be taken off to Costa Rica. But thanks to um, her willingness and commitment to, uh, to, to do that, we were able to, to work it out so they could travel. They met with us uh, while we were down there in Costa Rica. And some of the best days of my life is right down there on the beach uh, and working side by side with you. Uh, I do, I do want to, um, I, I can't let it go because um, uh, this young lady that's standing up here behind me is an athlete um, that, uh, that surprised me. Um, I knew that she had played soccer for Nikiski High School um, and uh, was, was looking forward to, to getting a chance to work with her. But to watch her grow over the next three years in her ability, you need to understand what we do here at Cook Inlet is a little different than what most, most uh, schools do for soccer. Uh, we have a co-ed team, and we play against other teams that are co-ed. 
we have at any given time four or five girls on the field, and they're playing against the biggest and the baddest boys that are in the Borealis Conference. Seniors uh, who, are, who are tall, muscular, strong, fast, and this gal is scoring goals against them. Um, Dosi was one of my, uh, she was one of the primary reasons that we were, we were so dangerous uh, her junior year. She was selected to the all-conference team. Uh, and um, the, mo the best thing I could say about her was that whatever I told her to do, she did it. She learned. She was very coachable. Um, and I'm going to miss her presence uh, at, at every soccer game that I have. There's one final thing that, that I, I, I thought a lot about this, um, and I thought we, we, cannot, we can't gather together without, um, without giving glory to God for something that many of you know nothing about. Um, but this, this winter, uh, while our, 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 our team was on mission to Peru, and, and actually, so uh, Linnea's mom was on, on that mission down there to Peru, and she was kind of holding down the fort and had, had support here, but... Uh, but it was really her and Weston that were kind of, they were just, they were, they were kind of, they were holding down the fort. Uh, and, and something weird, really, really strange happened. Um, uh, Linnea's sister, Shay, uh, Ann was going to school up in Fairbanks. And she was having headaches and, and all sorts of problems. Um, and she went uh, and had a CAT scan that revealed, that revealed a, a tumor that was growing in, in her brain. And it was one of those tumors that it didn't look good. One of those things that wasn't, it didn't look like the probability of operating was going to be real good. And, and any treatment for a tumor like that using radiation or chemotherapy is just a nightmare. And so this bomb just got dropped. Um, and I can remember one afternoon being out uh, in my classroom. And uh, it was after school and uh, Linnea came out and I thought she wanted to talk, I don't know, talk about chemistry or something, I don't know. Uh, uh, and she had, instead she, um, she stood at my desk and, told, and poured out her heart and, and, and told her story and how fearful she was um, for her sister, whom she loves uh, desperately. And, um, and yet in the midst of her communicating this, this, this heart-wrenching news, uh, her heart was full of faith. And she says, I know God's doing something. I know, I know that he's present, uh, and I know that he's got Shan under control. And if, and if she doesn't make it, that he's gonna, he's gonna take her right to heaven. And uh, so she had come to me for some, I don't know, counseling or a shoulder to cry on or something. And so here I am now, being encouraged by the senior in high school, whose faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and in His plans and purposes was ministering to me. Now that's not the end of the story, because her sister's sitting over here in a car. Uh, with her dad, and Cheyenne is completely cancer-free. Uh, and I stand before you as a man of science, and I, this kind of thing just doesn't enter my wheelhouse very often. And I, I am completely convinced that what happened this year was nothing short of a miracle. And so uh, honk if you give glory to God for that. All right, uh, you guys have been very patient standing up there. And by the way, I do want to make mention, these guys are standing in front of some totes here. Those totes are to collect any cards or gifts uh, that you might, um, you might want to pass on to them. They're not supposed to take it from your hand because you might be a germ carrier. I don't know, something like that. Um, but, if, but if you have a gift or something you like to give to them, you can drop it in one of these totes um, or, uh, or, uh, or, 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 or we'll find a way to get it to them. Um, but before we go, I'd just like to pray for each one of you individually um, uh, as a class of 2020. Um, because uh, uh, first of all, I say to your parents and your families how grateful we are that you've allowed us to join with you in, in educating their kids for eternity. Um, it really is one of the biggest honor, honors uh, of my life to have known and uh, worked with these young people. So uh, to you, Linnea. This is my prayer for you. Oh, Lord, you were singing to this girl before she was ever born. Let your holy melody penetrate Linnea's heart. Gently reveal old wounds until they are eventually healed. Gently stir eternal longings until her hope is restored. Tune Linnea's heart and her mind 
and her life to voice your melody, O God. Clothe her with strength and dignity so that she can laugh at the days to come. In Jesus' name, beep, beep. And Robert Walsh. Lord, you've provided Robert training for the events that are coming up in his life. Physical training, mental training, and even the experiences of his life thus far. May those continue to shape Christ-like qualities in his spirit. Yield in Robert greater fortitude, endurance, faith, focus, discipline, and intentionality in his life. Help Robert to live a life for your service and your glory, O God. Help him to master his conversation in all ways, that his communication may always encourage and build up those who listen to him. In Jesus' name, amen. And to Scott Howlor, father of contemplation and creativity, author of inspiration and loyalty, we pray your purposes would be accomplished in and through Scott's life that in days to come he would somehow be changed by the work of your spirit through his experiences and his trials and his relationships. Christ shape his heart through the years that have been, through the day that is today, and in the morrow that is yet to come. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been my honor to introduce to you the class of 2020. So while the graduates are heading back there, what's going to happen next is we're going to have the diplomas handed out. But let me explain to you what's going on. According to the guidelines that we've been given, the only people that can touch the diploma and hand it to them are their families. So what's going to happen is I'm going to call each one up with their parents. They will come up here. I'm going to uh, tell you a little bit more about what they're going to do in the future. And while I'm doing that, their parents are actually going to have a chance to give them their diploma, which is very unique. And I think they need a lot of honks when those, that happens. So uh, let's start with, oh, wait a minute. I have to give some information before we start. Sorry about that. Okay, before we begin today, I'd like to explain our honors system here at Cook Inlet Academy. We use the Latin honor system to indicate the level of distinction with which an academic degree has been earned. There are three levels of distinction. Cum laude, which means with honor, is bestowed upon graduates who are graduating with at least a 3.8 cumulative GPA. Magna cum laude, which means with great honor, is bestowed upon graduates who are graduating with at least a 3.9 GPA. And summa cum laude, which means with highest honor, is bestowed upon graduates who are graduating with a 4.0 cumulative GPA or above. Our graduates have all worked extremely hard during their high school careers and will be honored during this ceremony with the level of distinction they have earned. This level of distinction is also indicated on their diplomas. And with that, we are ready to begin. So, Mr. Uh, Lee went from, what, back to front. I'm going to go from front to back, just to kind of balance it out. So, would Linnea Grace Dosey and her parents come up on the stage? So Linnea Grace Dozy is the daughter of Christine and David Teigen and Don Dozy. 
Linnea will be attending Kenai Peninsula College in the fall to pursue accounting. With her love for math and figuring out numbers, she is very excited to begin this career. Linnea wants to use her accounting skills not only to benefit ministries, but also to support her future family. With her mom's mad math skills and her dad's mad sports skills, Linnea is thankful for her DNA that has brought her to where she is today. <laughs> she is thankful for the support of her family and friends throughout their, the rigorous demands her senior year has presented. Linnea is the recipient of the Alaska Performance Scholarship which is worth $19,020. Linnea graduates today summa cum laude. Linnea Dosi. Okay, wild, wild honking is now appropriate. <laughs> And while she's going down, just a little thing here, and he didn't know I was going to do this, but Josiah Martin is uh, here taking pictures. So maybe a round for him. And on a little side note, I remember Josiah when he was about three feet tall. <laughs> Next, Scott Lohr and his family come forward. Scott Lohr is the son of Scott and Billy Lohr. And after careful consideration, Scott has enlisted in the United States Army to become a combat medic and save lives. He ships to BASIC at the beginning of June, and Scott is looking forward to serving his military and his country. And of course, while he's doing this, our thoughts and prayers are going to be with him throughout his career. Scott Lohr. Next is Robert James Walsh. Would you come up with your family? Robert is the son of Gary and Sharon Walsh. Robert will be attending Kenai Peninsula College in the fall to work on his general education requirements. Following the completion of his associate's degree, he will be enrolling at the University of Washington to pursue a bachelor's degree in broadcast journalism. Robert's ultimate goal is to work as a sports analyst for ESPN. He would like to thank his parents, coaches, and teachers for their support and helping him become the person he is today. Robert is the recipient of the Kenai Peninsula College Senior Tuition Scholarship worth $5,600 and the Alaska Performance Scholarship worth $19,020. Robert James Walsh.
So at this time, we'd like to invite all the graduates, all three of them, uh, back up on stage. We're uh, for the turning of the tassels and the presentation of the class of 2020. With the turning of our tassels, I present to you the class of 2020. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the class of 2020 from Cook Inlet Academy. Scott Lohr, Linnea Dosi, and Robert Walsh, thank you, Lord, for the time that we've had with these guys. We pray, uh, we pray that you guys won't be strangers to Cook Inlet Academy, and we look forward to hearing the good things that God's going to do in your future. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to share with you just a little bit again, a couple reminders, um, and at, at this time, we're going to move towards the parade portion of our drive-in graduation ceremony. So first of all, uh, let me just remind you of the totes that are up here on the stage. If you have cards or gifts that you'd like to deposit, the totes are clearly labeled, and you're welcome to put them up here. The graduates are not going to be present until they finish the parade. They're going to follow me. So I'll be the first one in line at the exit over there. Now, obviously, we won't be able to keep all these cars together. But as we go through Sudotna, if you want to see that parade route, it's on Facebook. It's a super easy route right through the heart of Soldotna, and we're coming right back here to the school. So if you'd like to come by and say hi to the graduates after the parade, they'll be right here. Um, uh, Ron, any other announcements? Yes. Um, so I'm going to make my way to the lead vehicle while the graduates jump into their vehicles. Mr. German is going to make some announcements about how we're going to dismiss the parking lot here. Um, before I go, ladies and gentlemen, he's probably jumped in his car by now, but I want to remind you that uh, we, we just give our thanks to a young man by the name of Weston Dosey, without whom this ceremony would not have been possible. Very good. All right. So, and just a reminder, if you're not planning on participating in the parade, if you would let those cars that are going to be in the parade, just follow me out the way. But we're going to dismiss the families first, so they'll be first in line right behind me. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for coming uh, to uh, this unique graduation experience. You really have made it a treasure for these kids. Appreciate you. So as we get ready to dismiss, uh, first of all, I want to tell everybody, stay put until we get going. Uh, oh, there we go. That's okay. <laughs> so uh, again, um, this is a very unique time. And I think, as uh, Mr. Leaf said, you guys being here, everybody here has made this a very special, very memorable event for our graduates and something they will remember for the rest of their lives. If we think back as parents, and we think of our own graduation, how unique is this one going to be? They'll be talking about this for the rest of their lives. So uh, as we begin, what's gonna happen is that Mr. Leaf is gonna be over here uh, where we exit, and if you haven't seen the parade route, it is simply we're going to go out, turn to the right, cross the bridge, going up to the Y, make a left, catch Marydale, come down to Binkley, come back to the highway, and end up back here. It's really pretty simple. But uh, also, uh, Weston has uh, been uh, filming this. It will be on YouTube. And so I s there's a link on our website. If you'll uh, later, if you have want to tell anybody that's out, out of uh, state or in another city here in the state, there's a link there that you just click on that and Weston will have that up going when by next week or so. Correct? Okay, good. And uh, so with this, first of all, if you are in the front row, parents, the one thing we want to ask is don't pull forward. We have all kinds of wires here. So if you would back out and go this way, that would be great and you may do so now. <laughs> 